Welcome to the Wild Pitch Podcast, hosted by Brian Gales, Jimmy Gales, Brian Dorsey, and Christopher Rojas. All right, welcome everybody to another episode of the Wild Pitch Podcast. Um, coming again from Matt Giuliano's Play Like a Pro. Uh, special uh, shout out today to Chuck Alban at CNC Baseball and Apparel. Big <laughs> Chuck. Big Chuck. <laughs> He came through with uh, this sublimated nice banner behind us. For those of you that are listening in on our um, non-existent YouTube channel, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's coming soon. So you you will see the banner, but you will see it in the promos that our our boy Josh does. And uh, but uh, thanks to Chalk, he's been you know CNC baseball and apparel. Um, you know the funny thing about Chuck is in that business, especially he. He gets right back to you. He tells me, if I don't get back to you in 30 seconds, I'm dead. And it's true. If it's a minute, I go, what the hell's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> um, and in that business, we're always last minute. It, it comes in great. So thank you to Chuck um, from CNC. But today, I think uh, it's pretty interesting how, or it's exciting to look at baseball differently after you have a couple games under your belt, right? You go that huge break in the fall and the winter, you train. You do all this stuff, and then you get out on the field, and your outlook changes pretty quickly, right? I think, uh, you know, Chris and I had some games, and, um, you know, so we came to the winter workouts after a couple tough losses, probably a little anger inside of us, um, and, you know, we just basically shared some thoughts with some of the kids from the arsenal on how they train, and I think the biggest takeaway I took was you know, we do we do it a little differently with our winter workout. We we don't like to just go out there and uh, give you too much information, or I should say, five minutes a day on every subject. We do classes for our winter workouts, and I know we've all found a lot of success in it because we can give you consistent information for eight weeks straight. And if you do that and it's repetitive, the kid actually gets better. Right. Right. Um, but this week, I, I just felt while most kids, almost all of them have gotten better, we just wanted to share with them and we'll share with our audience that I don't think they realize how important it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I, I, absolutely. Right? I mean, you know, we, we, used to, we used to say trust the process, right? It was all about the process. And, yep. and that's still a real thing. I mean, we, I mean – you know, we got away from that because people made it gimmicky and, you know, they tried to use it as a punchline. But it's a it's a legit mindset. Right. And so it, like even with the kids, you know, when they come in on a weekly basis and they're taking their hour and a half class on whatever skill that they're working on. Um, we're trying to instill in them what it takes. To become successful rep after rep. Right. And right. then you're hoping that they they walk away after that that winter long session um, better suited and prepared and a little better awareness and understanding and and capable of maybe making some adjustments. Right. But sometimes they don't get there, even with the class setting. Right. And yeah. And it's and I think that's probably. You know, that's a natural occurrence as well, right? And because we know this as coaches, right? You just were kind of illuminating something or insinuating something as re as related to the collegiate atmosphere. Here we are in the winter, you know, for six weeks before we open up our, our season. And guys are doing things. And they look like they're doing pretty good inside, right? They're making some adjustments. And obviously that's a little different scale and level of, of – of of talent or player and but then when you get back out into the field things change well exactly because you may tell certain kids one thing over and over and over again and they feel like i got this and then it rears its ugly head two games in and while it may be eight out of ten times somebody's successful with throwing a ball across the diamond you know what at, at when it really, when the lights are on and, and it really matters, you got to be 95 out of 100. You can't, those errors and, or that mistake, and it's just because of a lack of uh, maybe just not knowing how important it is. And I know on, on, on our team, you know, we had a guy who basically made a mistake 
that we told him he was going to make. But the valuable thing was today he he was working hard because he saw what it how it affected the game. It finally changed, and that's cool. Like as long as it's right. quick, and it's by game eight, you're going all right. I I'm going to put extra focus. Here. Right. Sometimes you need to see that, right? So, or you need to experience it. That, right. that yeah. It's, I mean, it's a mindset that these kids don't have. You know, <clears throat> like you said, it's a process. Well. On the hitting side, we work with these guys. We do drills, say, for the first half hour, we're doing a drill, or really 45 minutes. Then we'll go into hitting, and everything's out the window. You know, once you could say, okay, now you're going to hit it straight up, it's yank trying to hit cage bombs. All right. You know, trying. They don't They don't continue, you know, to it's work discipline. on what they it's Yeah, It's discipline. It's, exactly. And it's tough to keep focusing on the same task over and over and over. The monotony of it at times, right? Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because I think um, that's why when we talk to the older guys at the collegiate level, we always talk to them about challenge yourself, right? Challenge yourself to trust what it is that you're working on and to keep getting after it because then over time you you evolve as that you know at that skill or that or that task and and you're able to apply it in the game like atmosphere and so it's the same thing with the young athletes and Mm -hmm. you know it's just but they're they're mentally they have to they have to now we have you know know, continue to remind them so they can train themselves you know upstairs a little bit you know so well we always talk about having to hold their hand where and it gets to what you guys both just said they just can't They'll do it right then and there, mm-hmm. and then you which is really encouraging, right? As a coach, when you see them do it, yeah, you get excited for them. Yep. But the sustainability, right? That's the and that's any the failure, last. they revert back. <clears throat> you know, if it they don't it's understand, be, yeah. it that's, is a process. It's going to take time. It's going to be uncomfortable. Right. That's the biggest thing at any age at any level, is the quit as soon as one thing goes wrong, right? Because it's, I mean, you've got to really trust somebody to uh, to stay with it and fail. How many times, you know, I play with uh, the Corey Erickson, right? Did you play against Corey? I don't remember if I did or His not. kid was a beast, right? Mm-hmm. What, what organization was he? He was with Cleveland with me. Um, he was in Springfield in AA when you were in the Southern League with us. He had signed, but he would yank off baseballs, hit 230, 30 homers, 20 homers, play big-time defense. But long story short, I would work with him. He was my roommate. We'd work in a cage. I'd have him going right center, middle, middle, middle. and But he would get jammed his first at bat every night, and that was it. And he would tell me, I can't. I'm not getting jammed. But re- in reality, maybe if he got jammed for a month, he would have made millions in the major leagues because right. that's where he belonged. But he could never, and that, and that's not like making him a bad guy. That's that's normal human behavior, right? Yeah, it is. I think it is. Yeah, and the reality of it, like I told the group this past week, is that we all need to get better. Every kid there needs to get. No matter how good he is, you know, nobody there is has made it yet. Right. There is no finish so, line. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> yeah. There is no finish line. You're, you're consistently working at trying to uh, develop your skills and, and most importantly, develop them so that you can do them well for long periods of time. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, you know, that's why we always talk about, even when, like when we work with the pitchers, pitching side, like, you know, BJ or myself or, you know, Brandon's over there and, you know, we always talk about just how you play catch, how important that is as a pitcher from the pitching aspect, right? Because, you know, your footwork, your alignment, you know, and trying to uh, attain the same release point every single time, right? But if the footwork and alignment are there, that helps, you know, with with the release point. So you can't lose focus of how important those little details are, right? Mm-hmm. But most What's our what's our default? Any any athlete, any baseball player, what's the default when it comes to throwing a baseball? That there's no. He stumped me. I did. Right? <laughs> well, th- think <laughs> about it, right? They don't. There's. It's just like all right, step throw. Yeah. Right. And I know you know w- you know some positions don't require that type of action, that type of footwork. You know what I mean? There's a different you know, maybe a different. But I think it does. I think 
I think you know, even after our careers, I've become so aware of what each piece of my body does and the balance and the centeredness. Right, when you talk about replacing the feet and throwing the ball. Yeah, yeah. and right. being centered, right, and athletic and balanced. So I think for a pitcher to, like, hit that small little spot and be so aware of, of your body in space. Right? right, that's a great um, term, by the way. And having yeah. feel like you talked about yeah. today um, in a pr- prior conversation, um, getting a young kid to understand that and it's hard when they're really young because their bodies are all over the place you right. know? but to get them feel and i know brian you're always into we got to get them strength training so they feel the balance and being able to do a squat even that takes that perfect form and um but that's where the attention to detail again comes in i think though would you guys agree that it's tougher nowadays because of the instant gratification I mean, we all feel it. You need instant gratification nowadays because there's no downtime. Everything's exciting. Your phone's going off all the time. And yeah. A lot of stimulation. Yeah. <laughs> it's that when that phone goes off, I don't care what I'm doing. I stop subconsciously and I need to see what, what just came in. That's where you need to start challenging yourself. Yeah. When it goes off, don't even look right. at it. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like someone's pulling on you. Right. It's like vicious. But, yeah. but as it relates to the kids, though, right, if they don't see a good result either from, from what you're telling them, it's tough for them to kind of really, really buy in, per se. You know, and they don't understand. Yeah. We understand that sometimes just because you do it, you get close to what we're asking to do, doesn't mean that the result is going to necessarily be there right away. But over time... Right. right, it starts to. Yeah, and it's hard enough to hit the ball, square it up when you're not thinking about right something. And now we're asking you to think yeah. about things. You know, I did find it interesting though. You know, I I find it interesting, and I found it also very uh, rewarding to see some kids actually do do the drills with some intent and purpose, and you can see like them really trying to bear down. You know, you know. I, Ideally, I think what we're asking, though, is that everybody kind of gets into that mindset, right? And, and, and yeah. for long periods of time, right? To yeah. do it consistently over and over and over and not just have a small window of where you're kind of locked in, but then you kind of just disappear into space a little bit and back to, revert back to old bad habits, per se. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the purpose of what we did the other day was we were pretty harsh with them, only to get our point across. Right. As a whole, Mm -hmm. we talked to the group as a whole. We went at them pretty good. But just to send a message. What triggered that? Was was Josh, you were around for that? What what, trick? What was it that what triggered that? What triggered it was I go to my defensive station and I had 15 kids there. And they weren't doing much of anything that we taught them. They just saw ball, catch ball, throw it. So they had to be reminded. Yes, and and I told them, again, for effect, I said it was like we never met. And I just I hope that resonates. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the stuff like that, I'm not really that mad at the kid. No, no, but, no, no, no. But we care, and I want the message to hit home. But it's funny how you said that, right? You're hoping that, you, you know, you said that, to make him think, oh, you know what? He's right. I'm not doing the way I'm supposed to be doing it. Right. Because, again, they get caught up. I caught the ball. Who cares what I look like? I threw the ball. But they don't know that footwork, that arm action, that inability to line yourself up is inconsistent play. And what did we tell the kids? That the big message, I think, was summer ball is super easy to play in because it does not matter. What is summer ball? It's about the individual, right? It's about me getting in front of a college coach. I don't care about my team. And if I do lose, what's the repercussion, right? I'm not playing for anything, you know, maybe in a tournament if I'm on a really good team in the finals. Until then, it doesn't matter. But we know we've coached high school. We've coached college now. Uh, It really matters. All all the details matter. Every game is – you need to win. Guys' jobs are on the line, right? At some of these programs, the head coach and the assistants, that's their livelihood, right? 
the high school coach needs to win. The town, you're representing a town, a school, uh, a university. It really matters. So. Well, then, then that, that's, that's, that's the, the outside part of it, right? Then just internally it matters because you're a competitor and you're, you know, your passion for the game and your desire to want to build something that's meaningful. And, and that's where it you know, also comes into play. And I think what happens is you said that the summer, pr summer landscape isn't that it loses that, that luster, right? It doesn't have yeah. that same meaning. And I think, you know, you know, you said that the other day and I'm listening, you know what, that's where pride kind of has to, you know, even, uh, even uh, as an individual trying to exude out why I'm, yeah, I want to be good. I want to be better, but I also want to contribute to the, the, the team and its potential success on the field. Right. You're also, I mean, you're, you're playing the game the wrong way, you know, it becomes kind of set in you the way you play the game. So if you take that summer ball that way, that's going to carry over into high school and in college. Right. You know, <clears throat> it's kind of plays into what Mookie Betts said, right, where he's been with the Dodgers for a couple of days, right? <clears throat> didn't like the way they were going about business and spoke to the team, said, you got to take spring training like it's game seven. So we have just, he just told the team <clears throat> this the other day. Yeah, he went to David Price first. Said, "Hey, listen, I'm going to talk to the team." You that know, took some nerve. Yeah, right? no. Price was like, uh, "Well, you know what? If There's you feel word, that he, way, yeah, he's a you do know, it. Obviously, you know, <clears throat> Mookie Betts is you know generational player, obviously, but yeah, he's going to a World Series organization, and then still letting them know they ain't doing it the right way. Well, they keep losing in the World Series. Yeah, you know? they have one goal. You know, if it, right. if the season's a bust if they don't win this year. Right. You know, so those guys are professionals, and they they know a little bit of what they sh they need to be doing. But they need but to be reminded sometimes. They, yeah. yeah. And the guys responded well to it. They thought it was awesome. The veterans on the team. Yeah. And probably set that's the tone. A, but you see, that's a sick mindset right there. That's, yeah. That's what it. That's that's meaningful. That's that that's something. I think for being an outsider coming in, that's even more effective. Like, well, he saw something that. You right. Know, but that, and that's why he's Mookie Betts. He goes about his business like that all the time. Yeah. You know, it's and that's how professionals are. That's well, you, what, what guys that separate themselves. You know what? It's so funny you say because think about how talented he is at other things. Like he's like a he could mm -hmm. be like a professional bowler if he wanted to. Yeah. But yeah. because he takes it so seriously, you know, he's doing it. He, he's doing it with some type of intent and purpose, right? I'm not gonna do it just to do it. Or if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna be good at this and. So that's probably how he carries himself, and that's you know, he p high standard, right? Mm -hmm. It's really what, what it's about having a high standard, and you know, that's a message that that's that's equally important to a kid's development as well, right? Outside of all the the training and the discussions around skills and all that, like, but having that internal, uh, I guess, fire to want to do well and and help a team win, and you know, so yeah, I mean, but in. <clears throat> it comes into when you go into a winter workout. You're there for 90 minutes. Concentrate. Yeah, work on it. Don't yeah. mess around with your buddies. You're not getting better if you're not taking it seriously. Yeah. And it's that fine line, right? Because you want to have fun. You want the yeah. Have fun. Don't take fun out of the game, right? <laughs> so it's, there is that yeah. fine line, you know. And we we deal with it right with the older guys. Like we want them to enjoy themselves. Like this is a you know this is a fleeting fleeting point of their careers. They're, they're four mm -hmm. year college players, and most of them won't play again afterwards right you so you want them to want them to enjoy it without losing what the you know the focus is and what the carrot is right so same yeah i think it's like a tough balance sometimes so you want the kids to kind of enjoy themselves when they're in there but ideally you want them to come in here with a little more you know mindset of 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 focusing on what it is they're being presented with mm -hmm. well you you know i think um brian and i are a good example of when i played I loved practice, right? I loved every part of baseball like all three of us do. But you couldn't get the smile off my face. Like everybody, oh, you're always smiling, always diving for baseball. I was just, I loved playing baseball. So, But I remember, you know, the year I get drafted, I go out and play. 
I come home and Brian's now a freshman at New York Tech. And so I'm coming back to work out with the team and see Brian play. And I'm in the cage and I'm just my, you know, happy go lucky, you know, smiling. And it was like Brian didn't even, he wouldn't talk to me. You just locked in, huh? <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> I, I remember the day. I remember the whole thing. Is like, I was like, wow, we are, <clears throat> we're both very similar, but we're both very different, right. but super intense in our own way, like you just said. Um, couldn't be more like make up off the charts as far as like team work hard, but different mentality. And I'm sure Brian, you know, you have a bunch of stories where you would get into it with pitchers and. You know, when I got hit by a pitch, I was like, oh, crap, man, that was that was crazy. That guy threw at me, and Brian would kind of be cursing at the guy. <laughs> Ready to rip his head off. <laughs> and then he would homer off him the next at bat. Because you took it yeah, personal. Yeah, I was a different person. You took it personal, field, right? Yeah. 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 But, you know, I think it's all mm-hmm. applicable, right? You c- it's all, you know, there's different ways to go about it, is what yeah. you're saying, right? There's different ways to kind of carry yourself through it. We had guys at our batting practice the other day at the college. They were diving for balls in, it was like 18 degree feel. And I was like, that's awesome. Like mm-hmm. I had two guys dive for baseballs. Um, but then I know there's a, there's other guys that might, when they're smiling and having fun, that's no good. Right. It depends on the personality. and I, just don't, I don't think it works <laughs> sometimes. You can't be that. It's like you are who you are do it the right way all the time yeah so let me ask you this is um can you teach somebody to be that or you have to be born with it i think if you make people aware of it i'm with you can i'm with you i don't i I think some people comes innate it's innate i think it's natural and i think others can develop it i think you can i mean i think yeah i was taught well from coaches to play the game hard to play the game the right way yeah and we had guys, we had, you know, Tech Hirschfield and Smithtown Gallagher, and, you know, it goes on and on. We had good coaching. So I always I knew to play the game the right way. And, you know, I was started to tell Jimmy a story. That, I mean, how I got drafted. I was, um, you know, you have the area scouts, they like you. So then they, you, the cross checker comes in, right, to come. Mm-hmm. And he sees you one game. That makes the decision. Yeah, <laughs> one game. I played, uh, we were playing CW Post at the time, now LA Post. And I was, I went one for two with the guy there. Who the guy was it, Koziak? Koziak. <laughs> hit about a 20 hopper up the middle. That was my base hit. But I always played the game hard. Out of the box, I ran hard. And on the base hit, I think it was like a 4-4 four, four or 4-5. Four, whatever, whatever it was, it was major league average. And that was the one thing. He saw that. He said, you know what? This guy can run. We'll, t- we'll take him. And that year, the Dodgers, at, in the 30th round or so, they said they're not taking any more outfielders. And he fought with the you know, scouting directors. Said, no, you got to take this kid, you got to take this kid. And they, they took me in the 36th round. And that, they weren't going to take me. They took another outfielder. And he's like, what? You said you weren't taking any more outfielders? Now you got to take this kid. Right. And they took me. But it all came down to that one time running hard. Like I worked all my life, you know, whatever it was, 15 years of playing baseball or, you know, working out. If I didn't play the game the right way, no matter how talented I was, how good of a hitter I was, my arm, if I didn't run hard on that, I could, I'm fast, but if I didn't run hard that one time, I don't get drafted. You know, and that's just, All right. it's kind of crazy how it kind of boils down to that, but. It's amazing. That's what, I mean, it, that's what it does though. Yeah. That's why you, you know, well, that's why you have to do everything with that with that intent. Yeah, you can't take plays off. No. You know, and I think this is good for the parents to kind of digest, right? So that, you know, cuz we've talked about this in in other maybe maybe we talked about this on a podcast. I can't recall. Um about the message to the parents when they look at their kids, right? And how they how they're getting on and off the field and you know what their behavior's like in the dugout. You know are they always checking their phones. You know, um, and you know as it relates to the older kids or so whoever kid, whatever kid has a phone. You know, you know even their interaction with their own kids, like being too involved in the dugout. You know, always wanting to carry their bags or you know 
provide them with snacks and 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 I know that's really more prevalent at the younger ages but mm -hmm. I think even there you know if you can start as a parent if you can kind of start to maybe um cut the cord per se a little bit right and 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 prepare your child who's young who's you know maybe 10 11 years old 12 years old and and just have you know we understand that they need all those those things the drinks the snacks and all that but you know what you prepare for them put it in their bag you know what make them carry their own stuff you don't have to carry this stuff for them They're, those little things go a long way yeah because you know it starts to build a sense of responsibility and their own self accountability for those young young you know athletes that they that they want to be and you know they want I'm assuming they want to keep playing the game right mm -hmm. so eventually you're going to have to have that type of uh you know independence anyway um i think you 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 set them up for a little more for a faster pro for faster progress right as to how to carry yourself um as opposed to it more you know being so coddled per se, you know, and this is not this is not a knock on parents because we know why they do it. They care about the kids, man. You know, they, you know, then they want to be there for them and they want to show their support and they want their kids to know that they love them and 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 I think that's all of that's you know great in itself, right? But there's a time and a place, and and so I think you know if we can get a, a, just a, a bit of a message out there, you know. So I'm glad you brought this up because now. I can irritate you <laughs> <laughs> and get you riled up. I've been waiting for this, though. So. <laughs> I know, this, this is going to fizzle so quick because I'm not going to let myself get irritated right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, it's, it's a, no, it's going to be fun. It's, it's, so if you had played at a decent level, right, like uh, usually the parents that have played at high levels, one, they know how hard the game is. Right, so they, they handle, they, they treat their kids a little differently, right? Uh, I know our dad was a talented, you know, baseball, softball player. He always told us how hard the game was. So we didn't want to really bust our chops about the game because he would always say, he's like, he's like, I just got, I can't even get hits in softball last week, you know? <laughs> and he would laugh about it, but that was pretty cool that it was an understanding yeah. how difficult the game was. So with that being said, you know, my, my kids play Little League. They're very young. But when I go to the game, I'm not involved oh. in that game. And, Chris, I know you're not involved. And when Braden plays, you're not going to say a word, right? Oh. I go to – I go to – away. I'm not even – I, I watch the game, but I go away. Like I'm So I know you go away. I heard you go away. So, <laughs> <laughs> so similar situation, I go to the – the game, the season-ending party last year, and uh, Michael Catalanato, Frank's brother, our kids played together. So we're at having pizza at some guy's house. The guy was a phenomenal guy. Right. The coach. Like, some of these coaches are just... Well, yeah, they dedicate their time. You know, it, I yeah. think for the most part, we think the like, egomaniac, um, nut job. Uh, this guy was phenomenal, right? And we just get to talking. We had just got back from the World Series, and... Michael tells them, you know, Jimmy coaches over at uh, New York <laughs> Tech and played baseball. And they're like, you mean to tell me you're a college baseball coach and you were sitting on the sidelines the whole time? And why don't you tell me if I was? I said, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, listen, it's your gig. What not? I don't want to get in the way. But this was a good guy. He's like, no, man, I would have loved if you came in. And I would have. But, uh, but then I'm like, you know who uh, Michael is and, and who his brother is? And he's like, you, I had two of these families here. They could have helped me with baseball. <laughs> so, so getting to you, I go to an event yesterday in the city for the fire department, and I see a guy. He goes, "Hey, I know uh, my son plays on Chris Rojas's son's team." He's like, "Do you believe that guy? He doesn't say a word to the kids." I'm like, "No, no, no. I don't either." I said, "Anyone that's like really." Like, we're not going to get in the way because what if I go out? I feel if I go up to a, a coach and I say, Hey, listen, I play baseball and I know what I'm talking about, I will not have that conversation for that guy to go, Yeah, yeah, I got this, or <laughs> to be offended, right? <laughs> so, this guy's like, Oh, so no, he was pissed that I didn't say, Yeah, it. but no, he goes, There's like six parents, they are furious. 
like you believe that guy and i'm like and i'm getting like hot inside i want to wow, just kill no him <laughs> he's like you know you would think the guy uh you know somebody's throwing balls out there the guy's a pitching coach i'm like he's the best he's like even worse <laughs> uh, he goes i don't get it and i'm like listen we don't want to get involved <laughs> i said because and sure enough the guy gets a phone call he's like oh here's one of the parents now he goes one of the crazy parents i go exactly you know we don't want to get involved and and he did bring up a good point. I understand their thought process. Like, there's a guy that's an expert in what our kids are doing here, and he's not sharing it. But we don't share it for good reason, not bad reason. We're not yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not like it's intellectual property that I'm trying to keep from you. It's not. No, <laughs> it's I don't want to step on toes. Right. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a respect of space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's also for me. I want my kid. Right. To be on his own and handle things, I don't. I don't need to be involved. See, right? Because let's be honest, and whoever that person is, like, I mean, they're they're upset now because I didn't get involved, right? But if I do get involved, and then all of a sudden my son is deemed to be getting some type of favoritism, right? Then they're not gonna like me either, or him either, right? So that's another yeah. reason why. <laughs> what do you think about that, Josh? Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> my dad coached me. And my little league team till I was like ten. Social media rock star Josh Garson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he uh, he coached me till I was like ten, and he was adamant that I would I was never batting fourth. I was never playing where I wanted to. He right. played everybody, treated everybody equal, and he tried to be very fair. And and he was definitely that dad that stood in right field and not with the parents because he didn't want to be that guy that was you know chirping the coach and mm -hmm. whatever. And I think I personally I loved that because when we did talk about however I was playing or whatever, it was on the way home from the game and just as like a reflection thing. And it kind of right. taught me how to be self-reflective after. And like, he would ask me, how did you feel about how you pitched or what do you, what did you think about this? And I think it was just a, a better way to go about it than yelling at me while I was right after I made an error or whatever. Or while you're at that. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I, that's not really conducive. Yeah. So no, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, Tough right. thing, because yeah. we really could jump in and really help those kids, especially really young kids like that. But all right, well, but listen, I, it's about him, you know. It is it's about I, your kid. Let him go do his thing. And 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 I think, you know, and, and you have to respect the other coach, man. That guy's putting. That's his a time message, in. right? That's a message that we, that us, those. That's my son on the team. I want him to know. Listen, you got to respect the other coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's you have to navigate that part of it too. Right. It's not always daddy teaching you. Yeah. You know. Um. Yeah. No, it's it's kind of a tough situation, but because I can see their perspective of this guy knows all has all this knowledge, he's not sharing it with our kids. Yeah. But, it it's it's common sense, I guess, but it's out of respect yeah. for the head coach no, that, that we do it, not wanting to be involved. You it's know, not a not want to help, though. No, it's, it's not, yeah. You know, I don't want to put that. If someone asks, if the coach or assistant coach or parent asks either one of you guys, hey, I know you, uh, you, know, you have some experience. Can you take my kid down the line and show him something? Well, you know, yeah, it's no funny. Problem. Well, you, that's, that's funny you say that because I have told those coaches, listen, you know, I'm, I'm here with – because the park is right by my house. Mm-hmm. I've said to them, and I, when it's not like your time, if it's my time, I, you can have all those kids around. I'll, they want to jump in or whatever. And I've, there's been like maybe one or two that that sometimes happen to be around in the park, and I tell CJ, "Hey, go get your your teammate. Make sure he comes in so he can, you know, and just yeah. give him a little bit. Yeah, not like a deep dive, you know, but just a little bit of passing along of information, you know. Yeah. But you know, and I've even told those guys, it's like, you know, if it, if you if you happen to be here, you know, feel free. I'm like I'm. Yeah, but when it comes to like getting involved it's like with the whole in that I and you guess. know what it is too like if you have a guy that you know he went to the clinic of the league and maybe he you know there's almost assuredly we're going to come in and say the opposite of what he's doing yeah. and that that's a tough thing like and the guy's helping the kid enough at that point but you don't want to like make him look like what he said is no good and then the kids lose respect and 
It's really a fine There's line. There's a big dynamic, too, that people don't understand either. It's the social dynamic. of That's the town we live in that I live in, you know what I mean? And I know most of the people, that they're, you know, they're no different. Their parents and their fathers with their kids in their town and also. But, you know, I just, you know, I think you got to guard certain certain. You know, you know, so you just gotta guard certain environments. But that's pretty interesting. I didn't. That's what you would think was gonna get me going. You know what? It probably did get me going. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be at that field and going, which seven of these <laughs> jerk offs? You know, <laughs> you're gonna be mad. That's great. I, I, I'm gonna go further away now. <laughs> Might take try to put a tree stand up or something. <laughs> the. Uh, but uh, Josh, real quick, um, you were there when we spoke to the kids and sent the message. And I know, you, you know, as being more recent of a player, you, you kind of said to me about that was really that's really good for a kid to hear. Right. Or you always like to hear something like that. Mm-hmm. Could you explain that a little bit or or what you liked about it or well, your takeaway? My I guess my view is a little different because I really love baseball. And I spent every day doing it, and I kind of learned at an early age, like, just how much time and you need to spend on it. And, you know, we talked about um, before how you taught things to the kids, and it seemed like by the end they had never done it before. Right. Um, and I think that goes to reinforcement and, you know, just strictly to the body. Like, they need to do it all the time because it's muscle memory. And if they do it once and never again, you're not going to learn anything. And I know for me, like, I, I grew up, I realized I wanted to be a pitcher. And after a lesson, like, I was in the mirror every night dry working work. on my mechanics. Yeah. Dry work, that's it. And throwing as much oh. as I could. And I, I understood the work ethic that it required to actually improve. And I think that is lost on a lot of kids. And I just practice once and I go to my hitting lesson and that's it. Yeah. And I think... That that as the, the work's done, right? That's all. Right, that's yeah. That's mindset. all I needed yeah. to do, and I'm yeah. gonna be a pro. Like, right. mm-hmm. it's 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 not that simple. And I actually posted recently on our Instagram a, a, a quote that I someone had told me it was the greatest uh, being the greatest requ- requires the greatest effort, and I, what that like literally means is you have to work harder than everyone else to actually sure. be the best. Even if you're talented. Even if you're talented, yeah. yeah. You can mm-hmm. like you were talking about that guy before who totally could have been in the big leagues, but if he didn't. If he didn't really want it and didn't realize what was going to get him better, he's not going to get to where he needs to be. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of these kids have Division One aspirations. Sure, Collegi- or any collegiate level. Or any right? collegiate yeah. level. And I know personally, playing collegiate baseball, I had to fight to get onto the field, and just like everybody else. And I, I saw it from almost day one as a freshman. The kids that were the nine guys on the field were the kids that stayed after, that worked harder than everybody else, that were there seven days a week doing something to get better. And – that's what's going to separate you. It's that simple. You know what? We should probably talk really quick about the um, hard work, right? And then maybe give the parents that are listening, like, you know, one thing as it relates to hitting, one thing as it relates to pitching, and one thing as it relates to fielding that they, that they can do with their kids mm-hmm. that can help them. So first let's talk about the hard work though, right? Because we actually talked about this the other day about – developing hard work or becoming a hard worker right you know josh and and josh kind of triggered something in my mind so um you said you always worked hard right at what age i think i just love playing so much i played all the time but i was obsessed with reps and reps and i just right but playing playing is a whole different thing in comparison to reps right and like the things you do are off the field that's what i'm talking about yeah because it's it's easy to be at the field and work hard but let's talk about when there's no game Right. What What were you doing, and how were how, you know how were you programmed? I guess, and at what age did it like hit you? So I mean, as far as like getting ground balls and playing catch and throwing and all that stuff, that was like to a very young age. But like middle school, you know, when we could strong enough to carry an L screen up to the park or get dropped off, like Brian and I would play double header each, right, and we'd come home. And inevitably, you know, I was st- struggling. We went to the field. We would just throw BP to each other, and then we take grounders, and then we would run sprints after a double header. After a double header, often, right? Yeah, it and was nonstop. Is, and like, you were what, fifteen years old, sixteen years old? Yeah, fifteen, sixteen. You know, and then I'd start to drive, 
and I would be going like, I'd have a full uniform on. Weirdo, so, like a weirdo. Yeah, right? I, was a, <laughs> I was a little off. Like looking back, so I mean, there were times where, you know, we would talk about we were talking about nutrition the other day. How, you know, before we work out, we'd we'd go up to Seven Eleven and grab a Slurpee. Slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in like a full uniform, and then I'd see like my friends there. They were probably getting a Slurpee too, but they're in their beach clothes. They're like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to the park to hit with my brother. But you'd think I'd be in like shorts and like no, right. I was I had it was like I was locked in, full uni. <laughs> We're going to the field. <laughs> That's great. I was a total <laughs> dork. <laughs> so, but Sal Gustinelli talks about it all the time. He used to drive by the park. He goes, "You guys were there every day." You said Sal, and people may not know who that is. You need to elaborate. So on he's that. the uh, local uh, scout for the Phillies. That's become just an. He's the top international scout probably in the game. and Special assistant to the GM. Yes, the he's big time with the Phillies and just the – Scout of the year last year. Yeah. In the country, right, yeah. like national. Uh, we'll bring him in actually pretty soon. We should get him in here. Um, that'll be a good time. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, like that was – we, me and Brian talk about it all the time. Practice with your team, that did nothing yeah, for Brian's my skills. On, yeah. What is that going to do with my skill, right? I'm working hard and I'm getting better, but I can get 40 times the reps right after this practice by myself. Right. That's not disregarding team practice, right? Because team practice, as it relates to like the I'm just talking about my development. You, right? But team practice, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it, and I loved, uh, and it's so important. But you got to do more because I look at it as like I have 15 guys on my team. Guess what? They all just practiced. So I used to be like. How do I do more than them to become the best player than them? Right? You know, in the minor leagues, those farm director would come and he would look at everybody and say, All right, two of you guys are going to play in the big leagues. And they'd be like 25 of us. Or for me, it was more like when a scout would look at 50 of us at a clinic, one guy here is going to get drafted. And I would look around and go, These 49 schleps, those poor, <laughs> poor <laughs> bastards. <laughs> I'm the guy. They don't know it yet. So <laughs> they're wasting their time. If there's only one, wow, these poor guys. That's what I would think. Right. I, I shouldn't have been thinking that, but I did. So, well, I'm that guy because right. I will well, outwork you, all of you guys. Right. Well, ultimately, you wind up being that guy. So I was that guy, yeah. yeah. And then, Brian, obviously, <laughs> you talked about we've, – we've had you explain – you didn't really figure it out until middle school, right? Like, yeah. So it was when – the fear out of not making the middle school team and knowing there was going to be 300 kids or 250 kids trying out, um, yeah, I just started working. You know, and we all, I mean, I guess prior to, so that was probably 12. Um, you know, I had Jimmy, though, so there was a little bit of... of Trickle down. Yeah, yeah, and he used to pay me to play catch with him. I don't know what age we were, but he'd give me a buck. <laughs> That was enough to get me out there. Right. But um, then you started to. But then it was just like, I got addicted to it. Yeah. But everybody yeah. has these crazy stories. I know you have them. Well, I think me, I the one thing I did, just like you guys, I was always out. Right. I was never in my house. And, you know, but I didn't necessarily play a lot of like, uh, like Little League or, you know, that whole circuit. I never really did that. But we did a lot of uh, sponge ball. Right, so like strike box, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And or, or we'd play softball, or we'd play half field baseball, right? It's awesome. Right, so I, that was an everyday occurrence, right? So right. that was like that was like playing in a league every day yeah. that for me. That's what it was like. But the hard working stuff, right? Because that's that was like the fun part, you know. And then you did a, uh, you know, we, you know, you're in the park and you probably maybe did some other stuff, you know. But but the hard work and like remember I, t I told you this, I and it wasn't until I was 19 years old that I learned how to work. Hard. I'm talking about bust my tail. It was almost painful at times and right. monotonous. Right. And that was because of Mike Brown. You know how hard yeah. of a worker he was. Yeah. It was insane. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, oh, that's how that's what it that's what work is. I was like I used to hide from him because, you know, we back then remember there was no strength coach no. at tech. You know, if you worked out, you worked out on you. You probably worked out with three or four guys from the team, you got together, went to the gym. Mm -hmm. I would hide from him. 
he'd want to go to the gym every day and I would make my I would disappear <laughs> I did not want to go to the gym like I wanted to be on the baseball field I didn't want to go to the gym right and then I realized wait if I really want to play at the next level I got to be in the gym and then once I got in there like you said it became you know like this is part of my makeup now this is my DNA this is who mm -hmm. I am and from that point forward though it was non-stop non-stop well, that's what they, it's, it becomes a habit right that's what they they talk about once you do it consistent enough it's just a habit you don't even think about it anymore yeah you just do it well, that was with us I mean I couldn't go to bed if I didn't go to the gym I didn't run right I your routine I mean, you I, had your routine there was times yeah. I got a, a, out of bed at midnight and said I didn't run tonight and went to the track right you know I was a little bit older we saw, I mean, I, we've seen at least more than once I've seen the ball drop on New Year's Eve in the gym. Total dorks. <laughs> <laughs> but so I think the great message there for some is like, you know what? It, it, the Look, have a passion for the game. Enjoy it. Want to be out there. The sooner you can learn how to work harder, though. So, like, let's talk about that for our parents and our kids, right? Brian, one Thing, one drill that you think they can do on a couple times a week that a father or a mother can go into a cage with their son that they can help somewhat apply that would be I mean I just useful. think keep it simple hit take as many swings as you can and have an approach up the middle that's going to correct a lot of things so just thinking so just up the as middle. As simple as that. Just thinking up the Pick middle. Pick a spot in the cage. Yeah, hit it right back at the, at your parent that's throwing to you. you or know, if you're on a tee, right? Well, yeah. Well, and that's what, how I got better. It was just I set up a tee in my basement. Um, I think we hung a carpet. I think it was hitting into, you know, just a cutout piece of carpet. Yep. And you tried to nail that thing. Yeah. And at that time, it was 100 swings a day. But when I got into those middle school tryouts, I mean, I didn't miss. And it was just months of every day, 100 swings off that tee and line drive right up the middle. You know, so on a simple thing, um, just having a, an approach, is gonna, I think it's going to correct your swing. The more you hit, the better these guys, they're going to start to figure it right. out too. You have a, so you have that, a goal if you're yeah. trying to hit a line drive to the back of the net. Um, and then Right, because that requires certain – uh, you know a certain approach in your in your swing right your yep. front side has to stay on stay yeah, closed think, yeah. got to be inside of the baseball mm -hmm. right you got to be through the ball to be able to hit the ball up the middle or away right exactly. so so it's going to correct a lot of things that's great and 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 that doesn't that doesn't take rocket science right no. so you don't have to be if you're a parent you don't have to have all the knowledge in the world you can just keep telling your 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 child hey Try to hit this, right? Or maybe challenge mm -hmm. them, right? And then when they don't do it, say, well, that wasn't it, right? So make the adjustment here. You know, help, you know, walk them to, through making an adjustment. Just saying, you know, just, I guess, with layman's terms, right? Jim, fielding, what, what can a kid do? Well, first off, reps, right? They don't get enough ground balls on their own. And I think, like we talk about it all the time, having a purpose where – Every ball that's hit to you, because it might be you and your dad at the field, to always have in mind, like, all right, I need to make a play somewhere here. I'm not casually catching a ball and flipping it back to the fungo guy. I have my footwork creating momentum yeah. to my target. That's big, man, because yeah. most of these kids just pick the ball up and they throw it right back to where it came from. Yeah, where there's no – even the guys on our team do that sometimes. I'm always like, no, we got to be game speed, right, Game speed with your footwork, you know, center the baseball, uh, and what place your feet right center to to their left, right? Because a lot of these kids sometimes take that thing on their right. So, you know. so that's where the the classes that we do come in because some of this terminology to give to a, a random like some one of our listeners that the kid never went through any of our program to give something to them. It's like. Always have a purpose. Move your feet towards your target after you catch. Bingo. Now, if it's an Arsenal-type player, they could be reminded, yeah, we want to catch the ball left of center, bring the ball in to our belt buckle, and replace our feet, shuffle, in other words, to our target, and have both hands on top of the baseball when you're not throwing. All right. I think our 
the kids that have been around us are going to understand that a little bit yeah. more. But it's just it's just purely the reps. And and listen, we had a kid come to try out for us the other day. He's from the Dominican Republic, right? Yeah. So automatically, he's the best there. And why is he the best there? Because he literally grew up until in recently yeah. in an environment where everybody knows how to field. On Long Island is... And they play every day. They play every day, but they also look up to big leaguers as their heroes, and they copy them. Yeah, copying those, that's that's a big, that's how I remember learning. I remember learning by trying to mimic big league guys. Yeah. yeah. But what a, a lot of parents say, don't copy them. No, no, copy them. Completely right. copy them. Yeah. Right? But he was head and shoulders better than everybody because he was in an environment. Defense amongst everything is so behind in these areas because it's hard to find the space and, and mm -hmm. whatnot. But uh, I'll let you go with pitching. Yeah, so I think very simple uh, message is um, footwork and alignment, right? So working on keeping that hip and shoulder locked into your target as long as possible, right? And then staying over the baseball mm -hmm. as you throw and trying to pound them in the chest as many times as possible, right? And then what that relates to in the delivery is, you know, I, I, when I used to do tons of lessons and work clinics and, you know, be around Don Cooper and, and, and he'd come in with all his pitching coaches from the White Sox and then even from my experience, like, you know, with, with the guys that I worked with, like Rafi Chavez, who was a big league pitching coach with the Seattle Mariners, and, you know, now he's the pitching coordinator with the Phillies. Um, and it was always about being able to stay on target as long as possible, right? And and allow your hand to work out in front. Right? So when I talk to the kids, I tell them there's like four things. Um, and what I love is like, because we have, you know, obviously we have like BJ Lemuro who helps us with that crew and mm -hmm. he's just awesome because he's like spits the same message out to them all the time. And it's right. like, um, four things I tell them. If, there's t if you do this, these four things, or take these four things in this order and do this as many times as possible, over time you're going to start to really figure it out. And so when they go into their delivery, right, you know, when they get that that that, that knee up and they start to come out of their delivery, out of their balance that they call it, or, the lo or their load, take your hip to your target, have your shoulder behind your hip, and your hip and shoulder going to your target, have your chin behind your shoulder, and have your hip, shoulder, chin going to your target, and ride that out, and then lastly... Get your hand out there. They're going to have to rewind that a couple times, I think, to get that. <laughs> so hip, shoulder, <laughs> chin, hand. Boom. And you know what the beauty is uh, of, of the hitting, fielding, pitching? Is that it's that simple. Repeat the basics over and over again, and you're going to be great. Over and over again. It, they, you know, people are making it too complicated nowadays. Um, I mean, in, in pro ball, everything was so simple. Right. Same Everybody had the same thing. It was maybe three keys on everything, and that was it. You know, so. Josh, we got. Any, did we miss anything? One thing I just want to add to what you just said. Um, I think you see that a lot at the little league level. Actually, I've been to the little league World Series a few times, and they always say whoever's the most fundamentally sound will mm -hmm. win. Yeah. And 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 that goes across all levels. You know, mm -hmm. and I th and like as obviously the talent becomes better, and your fundamentals are there. You excel. Um, I think that's just one. It was just one thing I wanted to add. But yeah, you guys hit a lot of the key points. I think. And one last message to the hardworking. This one last message, because you said those guys play every day out there in DR, right? And and it's the same in Florida. Any warm weather sure. climate, right? Florida, Texas, Cali. Those guys are a little more advanced, right? We always see that typically. Um, but here's the other thing about as it relates to like the Caribbean or Dominican Republic. You know, I, not that this is a good thing because these kids lack in academics and stuff out there, but those kids wake up at eight years old every day trying to get off that island, right? So their purpose is a little more meaningful, right? So remember that if you're a parent and your child is telling you like, hey, I want to be a big leaguer. You know what? You can do that. You can possibly fulfill that dream, but guess what? This is what you're up against. And this is what you're going to need to do. All right. Yeah.
But that was all I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I think the, the message is always consistent with what we're going to say, too. And, you know, we'll repeat a lot of this information as we go forward, and it's all good stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, just to finish it off, we wanted to tell those kids to focus a little more so they can help a team win. Because the final message that we gave those guys was, hey, we have 40-something guys on our team, and it's sometimes it's hard to find six. Like, we can look at our lineup and go, I got about six guys I know. I know what they're going to do, and they're going to do it. And then you got 34 question marks. And out of that 34, there's going to be guys that emerge. But it might not be the guy that you thought in the wintertime um, because someone is going to have the mental toughness or – just the ability to perform in a game where it's not rattled when the lights go on um, and the pressure starts to come. So I think that's a, also a very positive spin on it because if you do do the work and you have the mental toughness, I don't care how many people you're up against, it's pretty easy to also get over that hump and Overcome be a guy. That. Yep. Right? Agreed. So I think that's what that message was about that day to, to put the importance on the high school games and the college games and and even summer hopefully they just they realize that you should perform every single day and it should matter to you yeah so but yeah that'll be it for this well thanks for tuning in folks and until next time